Okay, so many of you guys are already familiar with Nikki. She came to us and she was letting us know when she was having relationship problems. She talked to us when she was going through the corporate situation through training and we did the corporate pest that wanted to nest and rest. And then we have gone through her breakup. So now we are still in the messiness of a breakup. We are just, some people thought that she was going to get back with him and she has not, but she has given us an update. So check out her update. Hey girl. Hey, I am loving all the stories. Um, I'm, I love it here. I love it here. So it's been, uh, we're getting ready to, we're approaching March. And so this will be three months of me being FNF as in bleep Negro free FNF. Uh, what can we say for FN instead of a <laughs> funky knucklehead free? Um, and I love it here. Um, I just had another, I have weekly therapy. This is the most, uh, consistent I've ever been with my therapy. It has been going great. Um, I, you know, in the beginning I felt a little, of course, a little kind of unstable and just shaky and upset about being abandoned. Um, and I had questions, you know, how am I really going to make this work? How am I going to make, how am I going to do all this by myself again? But in reality, I still was doing it all by myself. He was giving the least and taking the most, the absolute most. So I've been doing a lot of detoxing and all I can say is I love it here. So every time I think, whenever I think I just don't have no more to say to the story, I got a little bit more to say. Um, first of all, I'm going to start by saying this to all of the people that was like, she's not done with him. She's not done with him. They'll be back. Watch, watch, watch. Eh <laughs> eh I'm done. And when I say I'm done, I'm done, dumb. I have not spoken to him. I've not seen him. I've had very, very little indirect contact. Anything that I only the absolute most that I've ever had to say. But is he done with me? Probably not. And I hope he's suffering. I do. I hope he's suffering because at the end of the day, when he tried to humble me by lightweight diet moving out on me, that, that shit backfired on him. It did not go the way that he hoped it would. So wherever he is with his, uh, with his dusty, dirty, broke, trying to rent a car because I don't have one, tore down cars, living with your sister, mama, wherever you are, or, with, or living with your next victim looking ass, I hope he's suffering. I do. So. So like I said, I got some new things to tell you. Not super juicy, but still some new development. So here it goes. So um, since everything fell apart, I've noticed. So if you have, um, most of us have iPhones. A lot of us, at least most of the people in my circles that I deal with, we do. So you know how you sync things in a calendar. Of course, a lot of things in our calendar were synced together because, you know, we had, you know, we had this family I was trying to build that he just basically was kind of like not really present and not participating in with like most typical XYs who don't participate in their families. So you know how this thing works. You have things that are joint in the calendar. Um, anything that's on the calendar that involves our kids and involves us that he needs to be a part of that he's supposed to be present for responsible for. I would always send it to his calendar as well. There was almost five years of him always ignoring this stuff. You know, when you get a calendar invite, you either accept it. When you accept it, it shows up on your calendar, including the reminders, um, or you can decline it or change it. He wouldn't respond to most of them. And this is weaponizing competence because then let's say my son has a, a parent teacher conference. Uh, let's say my son's got a conference or, 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 you know, our, my kid has something or there's something he's supposed to be doing or taking out the trash, whatever. There was all kinds of chores and everything on the schedule. And these are things that he resented because he's, you know, like a, he's a cowardly person and also very irresponsible. So he resented a lot of these things. He also resented and hated the fact that I was too business. I was too corporate. Why does everything have to be like this? You know, structured, you know, responsible. So most of the time he would not respond to most of it and then if he that way if he um skipped out or screwed up some responsibility which he often did then he gets to say oh i didn't see it oh it wasn't added to the calendar or i thought i had it memorized so he would completely and um, it's important for me to say that you know the calendar thing he completely you know would ignore this here's why it's important for me to say that part because there would never be a response so if you've got things on your calendar that you want to get rid of, you just delete it and then you go on about your business. The only reason why you would respond is because you know that the other person is going to see your response. So why all of a sudden 
almost a month after you abandoned us and you thought it was going to humble me and I was going to let you come back a day or two later and you know we just kind of work it out and I let you stay being here being the bum you are making my life more difficult he gave me so weeks after he gave me the gift of goodbye and I discovered oh my god I really don't need him or anybody like some help is really like really not better than no help especially the the pseudo help he was giving like I'm good I'm good just goodbye I'm I get these notifications popping up in my emails and on my phone and I'm like what is this why are you going through and responding and declining to all this shit now like why are you doing this are you trying to get a response like, are you trying to get a response, you know, get a rise out of me? Are you trying to trigger me so that maybe some old fashioned arguing that I, I, I abandoned that long time ago, like well over a year ago, I started becoming healthier and not arguing things like that or re reacting, responding. And, I'm, and I must say, once I started doing that, he did not like the person I was becoming because I wasn't so uh, flippant and I wasn't even so like sexually hyper. Damn it. Oh, a call just kind of interrupted what I was saying. So hold on a second. So I would say a little over a year ago, I started getting very serious about my own personal development, you know, dealing with, uh, I was diagnosed with PTSD, diagnosed with depression, other things, and really working on really like doing the work instead of using my trauma as an excuse for, for behavior that still wasn't really bad, but very emotional. So once I started kind of really tightening up on a lot of those behaviors and stuff, he actually said to me that he didn't like, he liked me more when I was unregulated emotionally because then I was more hypersexual and other things like that. He didn't like this person I was becoming that was more just healthy. So I'm like, you're doing this now because you're trying to trigger some old behavior. Like, why would you, why would you choose to, um, but this is what they'll do as well. They'll try to gaslight you and think that, and try to tell you that you're over, overthinking when they know exactly what they're doing, which is emotional manipulation. Um, they're not as stupid. And I love uh, your friend that's in France, the French girl, I like to call her, her, she, she talks about this a lot and she is dead on. And it's so nice to hear other women say what I've been saying for a long time, but everybody, everybody around me would try to be like, oh, you're, you're just, you're just too, um, you're too dramatic. It's not that serious. Yes, it is. These men are not stupid. They know exactly what the hell they're doing and what he's doing when he chooses to go in and finally respond to these things by declining it. He knows that when he declines it, I'm going to get a message that said he declined it. So that's a way to try to disturb my peace, disturb my journey of detoxifying from his toxic ass and disturb my journey of moving on and doing better without him despite him. Because otherwise you could just delete it. You could just delete it. That That's it. So I must say, number one, that I am very proud of myself. I saw it for what it was. I kind of laughed out loud at it. And then I just moved on. Like, okay, I see exactly what this is. This is real cute. Not happening. I'm not the same person. I am not hooked on you and not one bit. I don't even have a, like, I don't have a semblance of hope that if I try to like, you know, reach out to you and say, why did you do this? That maybe that there's some, no, like I'm done with all that. Like I'm completely done. Like I'm good. So I don't respond. So then, um, apparently now I have him blocked on everything, everything. And the only thing I couldn't block him on for a long time was TikTok. It was very difficult to figure out how to block people. But now that I figured that out, my block list is long and strong, honey, because there's so many toxic people and relatives and uncles and stuff that it aggravated me. It really disturbed me that every time I open up my TikTok, they're like, you know, it shows you the people who look at your page. It's all the people who don't F with me and I don't F with them that are the first ones and X and and ex-boyfriends and ex-hookups and things like that like why are you guys always the first one always looking at my looking at my stuff why are you all why are you cyber stalking me you have nothing to do with me why like why are you so obsessed with always watching my stuff it's but and him every time i open my tiktok it would show that he top of the list viewed my page why are you watching me you literally left me you had left me you abandoned me you told me that i ran you off so if i ran you off why are you always watching my tiktok dude okay quick break right here she and i are sitting up here inboxing each other for instagram she's sending me a note i'm talking back to her i let her know that she is pretty that's the reason why he is stalking her tiktok now let's continue you literally quoted a Bible scripture and you threw Jesus up in my face, basically telling me that Jesus told you in his Bible that it's better for you to sleep on a rooftop than to have anything to do with me. So if 
that is the case, then why, why, pray tell, are you watching my TikTok all the damn time? When you left me, I was so terrible. I was so terrible. But you watch it <laughs> because you're pretty. Oh, yes, I am, girl. And yes, you are too. <laughs> oh, but even that, even that, when we were together the first year, the first year before he asked me to be his girlfriend, we were just dating and just, you know, friends with benefits and everything and seeing other people. I can't tell you how often he would say to me, you are so pretty. He would come to see me two, three in the morning. It just, you are, and he would say stuff like, this feels so good out of no matter, no matter what else I'm doing and blah, blah, blah. This, this always feels the best being here with you. And he would, he would just gas me up so much. As soon as we got together, he stopped all that. No compliments. And when, before we got together, he almost never even got to see me glam. He got to see me like, you know, just overnight or hanging out, going shopping, sweatpants, all that, unless we were on a gig. But most of the gigs, like he put me on several gigs, but we weren't on them together. So he didn't even get to see me like like on stage beauty. It was just regular, smegular, everyday life. And he would always talk about, you're so, he would say this so much. And then when we got together, all of that. Just all of that done. No more you're so pretty and all this these compliments and you're so enthralled with me. You know, like like a freaking, like a drug dealer. Typical XY behavior. They want to get you real high off that drug and make sure that first hit is so good. That way the rest of your life with them, you're chasing that high forever and hoping to fucking get it back. They're, these, they are, they're, oh, it's violence. It's violence. And I'm so, I am so glad this final chapter being with this XY has totally brought me all the way to the light. Like, yeah, it really has. So anyway, let me go back to the point. <laughs> so I figured out how to finally block people and it feels so good. Most more so, so good that I got to block a lot of them family members um, that just like when I tell you my, my family is so toxic, like most of my therapy sessions are just about the way that I grew up in my family and just unpacking all of that crap and just toxicity and trauma that we used to joke about joke about and then repeat the sick cycles but he's blocked too Whew, and it feels great so um my mother I have a conversation with my mother this morning and she informs me that you know there's several Facebook like chat groups and a lot that are like family center for family trips and stuff and apparently I'm still a part of a lot of them but I don't ever like see the activity because I, I don't really fool with them like that so um She's trying to organize a cruise for her birthday coming up. I recently opened the door for like two family members, my mother and one of my brothers. We talk a little bit with, and I let them know, like I opened the door a little bit, but with like mad boundaries, like, like my relationships are conditional now and they will always be like it or not. There are rules and regulations to be across on this side of the fence. So there's that. So we're talking a little bit and she tells me that um, she got really upset because she noticed that I guess over the past couple of days there's been some conversation in, in some chat group that I just never saw. And I guess she was reusing that one because it's the same people she wants to be in the cruise minus I guess some people that she kicked out, which I'm glad. And she did that for my safety and, and I'm very, really... I'm really, really appreciative of the fact that she did that as well. I, t I thanked her for that, for, for making sure that that was a mostly safe space for me to be a part of a conversation. So it's cool. It seems like ever since I, you know, did what a lot of them thinks is, uh, is, is crazy, I made some crazy moves, but you know what? It's shaken up some things in the family as well, and that's great. That's great. So she tells me that the ex-boyfriend, D is for donkey, that D is in that chat group, or he was, and she noticed that for days, like, why is it that he's still in this chat group, but he left you, he's not, like, he's never, he wasn't ever a part of this family, so she calls me, and she's kind of going off about this, and she's like, this is so sorry, because he's here, he's reading everything, he's still present about this, this family trip that I'm trying to put together, and she said, I hope you don't mind, but I kicked him out the group, and I said, thank you, thank you for doing that, he didn't need to be there, so I went ahead and actually started participating today day um after she got rid of him and so she she was venting to me about him and she was like I don't know if you noticed this but we all tried to be welcoming to him and we all tried to welcome him as a part of the family he's supposed to be my grandbaby stepfather and stuff and anytime I called him or I reached out to him when you were like away he would never answer you know he like basically like he was just always very standoffish with all of us now there are some reasons that he was like that 
because he understands the dysfunction in my family. However, this is still my mother trying to build a bridge with you that I still have some what of a relationship with. And when I'm not around, she's like, I guess trying to check on her grandkids. And I did notice that the few times I did try to connect him with at least like my mom, how he was very just standoffish. And that is a red flag. So she's venting to me about this. And she's like, why wouldn't he excuse himself from this chat group? Why would he purposely stay and just lurk in there and he's reading all the messages for what? Like, why do that? He left you. And I'm like, that's a good point. But thank you for putting him out. But it's like, to me, that's sick. Are you, That's sick in the head. Like, you tried to, like, you tried to make it seem like I was this horrible person, but you're still doing some lightweight diet horrible things. Like, why, why would you stay in a chat group with my relatives about a family trip? Why would you stay there lurking and reading everything? And you know, in those Facebook message, message groups, whenever you make a, a post or whenever you drop a message, it will literally so in those groups um, or in those uh, group conversations whenever someone makes a message in the group it will show you exactly who read the message and then of course who did it so she was saying that over the past couple of days now I have him blocked so there was no way I would be even be able to know this or see this I think the most I would see in that group was like a Facebook user um, and I did see that because when I finally went into opened up those messages I saw that my mother removed two different Facebook users and it just said Facebook users and one of them was him she told me um, <clears throat> but it's like you left me not only did you leave me, you abandoned me on purpose. You tried to make life hard for me. You dogged me out on the way out the door. You said, you know, you supposedly my mouth ran you off and this and that. And you, you know, just all kinds of stuff. But so why would you stay there? Why are you lurking? Like you're lurking and you're stalking at this point. For what? For what? So, but this just goes to show, this goes to show that who needs who? And who's really digging who? We are the gold and they are the diggers always. And the greatest trick, of course, is, and he did it for a while with me as well. Me be, me actually being convinced that because he is more a more polished turd, he's well-spoken, he has a degree, he's incredibly talented, he's world-traveling, he cleans up nice, he's nice to me. In the beginning, he used to tell me how pretty I was and he would pretend that he valued me and everything else, that he's the prize. I'm so lucky to, to have someone like him. As long as they can have us, like... Delu in, in that Delulu land of thinking that like we're so blessed to be with him or something it's all good but really it's a projection of, of how they feel about us it's it, it was just a projection it's like flip the mirror or whatever you want to call it because now like once I saw everything for exactly what it was and I decided you know what this is not good enough and if it's not going to be like this we don't need to be at all the moment I decided to actually value myself, see the truth for what it is and stand stand on business and stand on the truth, then look what's happening. I'm moving on with my life. I'm things when I tell you things have become so better so quickly and that's something the universe has has showed me with almost every single one of these relationships. Every time I decenter them and I'm like, "No fuck this shit." Like, I deserve better almost every time I make that decision. The problem in the past is I would go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. This time, I'm standing on business. Ain't no back. <laughs> Ain't no going back. <laughs> Hell no. Like, I've seen the pattern way too many times to, like, stop ignoring it. But every time that happens, doors open, window, win doors open, windows open, more things come to me. Like I said, like, literally, like, a week after he left, almost a week after he left, I got a phone call about me speaking at the state capitol. Yes, I did that. And I was on the news. <laughs> I wasn't even looking for that. But it was just literally me being myself and standing in my own. It was literally me being myself, standing in my own authentic truth and power. And when I finally, when I did that, literally, when I popped up on the news, it was the next day that I started getting those damn notifications about him. Um, I've got to go back to know the exact timeline. I don't remember. I know it was, it was weeks later because the news thing and me being in front of the state was recently I want to say like in the past two weeks I think is when that happened so you know we're still at the beginning of the year uh that happened oh, I have to find the date but but long story short the point is I decide I am choosing me I'm choosing what's best for me and my kids and so many great things like and every time that happens Everything that I'm afraid of, it's like it dissipates. And it's like God, the universe, whatever you want to say, your higher self, my ancestors, all of that. Show me this is the path I need to be on. Stop making this, stop centering this man. Stop making this man, this relationship, my God, because it ain't shit. Like, stay, keep the main thing the main thing. <laughs> and look what we'll do for you instead. <laughs> 
and I've got my timelines all messed up, all mixed up, mixed up, mixed up. But I'll tell, but I do know this for a fact. Literally the day after I was on the news in this state for PBS New Jersey, literally the day after, that's when I got them damn notifications from him, which means his ass saw it too. <laughs> suffer, dude. I hope you suffer because you had me and my kids suffering for almost five years while you gaslit us, my children. There, you like what you did to my children and your children by wasting our time and by by wasting our resources my son my youngest two children asking if they can call you dad just to have you abandon all of them you caused me my children and your children to suffer for a while with your ain't shitness i hope he suffers i hope he suffers and i hope he finally feels the consequences of all of his shitty ass actions that's what that is sit with that fool sit with it because i'm done <laughs> So that's the end of Nikki's story for right now, but she is telling her story more on TikTok and it's not necessarily in one minute clips. It is like in 10 minute formats. So let me know if you want to hear more from Nikki, like, comment, share.